On a recent episode of 32 Thoughts, Elliot Friedman entertained the possibility that Kirby Doc could be traded for Pierre-Luc Dubois this offseason. We'll be getting into that, plus a potential sneaky draft choice by the Montreal Canadiens, maybe with the Florida pick in this upcoming draft, so you won't want to miss this edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's news edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, alongside my co-host, Jesse Poirier, and we are less than 100 subs away from 5,000. Hit the button if you haven't already. Not going to dwell on any longer. We're that close. Help us reach there within the next couple days. We know you guys can do it. All right, let's get right into this news today, Jesse. Um, this was pretty big. Elliot Freeman links Kirby Doc in a Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, and before I get into this, I do want to say that this isn't something Friedman has said like, oh, there's chat saying uh, Doc could go for Dubois. But the fact that he mentioned it on the podcast as a possibility is very interesting. And if you guys have been paying attention, Friedman says if there was any question that it meant the end of this particular Jets core, that erases doubt. He was referring to Rick Bonus' short and fiery press conference. If you guys haven't watched that, Rick Bonus called out his team. But the important thing here, Jesse, I've had people say to me, it's simple. You trade Dubois to Montreal and you ask for Doc. He does say, I think if it were that simple, it'd be done already. So I don't think it's that simple. And these people are not just random people on Twitter, Jesse. These are insiders talking to Elliot Friedman. What are your thoughts on a potential doc for PLD trade? Because to me, I just think it is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it, Josh. You know, it's, uh, I think that obviously, you know, it would have happened already if, if we would have thought, you know, that mm -hmm. that would be the case. But to be honest... Um, you know, like I get it, you know, we know Pierre Luc Dubois past history and everything else and, you know, getting called out by coaches. We know what happened with Tortorella. Um, but at the same time, like I'm, I'm really torn about this because we need that top end talent as well. And, and we sure. know how much, you know, as Habs fans, we respond to those Quebec born players. He's shown that he can be healthy over the course of a season. He can produce. So it's one of these things where I keep kind of going back and forth about it, but we just worked so hard to establish a really good culture right mm -hmm. now. And I think that's the biggest thing for me right now, Josh, that is just making me hesitant about this. Yeah, and, and Dubois, while he himself doesn't have a great track record of you know being super liked by coaching staff, um, I, of course, the situation with the Jets the last few years, go watch Rick Bonus's interview where he just calls out the veterans on the team. Doesn't name Blake Wheeler or Mark Scheifele, but you just know that those guys uh, are the causes of it. But Dubois, you're right. I mean, when it comes to good team culture, he's not exactly the guy you think of. But at the same time, Jesse, he's a near point-per-game player, near 30 goal score every year in the NHL. He is a top line center caliber player and at the same time like is there a chance that doc never ends up being as good as dubois sure but there's more to it than that right we believe in doc here in montreal and like kent hughes and gorton have said they want to build a team that the fans can be proud of not just after everyone starts loving doc just to ship him out for someone like dubois and not to mention like dubois is going to be an rfa after this season and he has stated publicly he wants to be a ufa and said that again today Morat Ates, a writer for the Winnipeg Jets, said Pierre-Luc Dubois was asked about how important the right to choose his path might be. He says UFA status, unrestricted free agency, gives players power. He's a restricted free agent this summer. Could be a UFA as soon as next. And a guy that says openly, I want to be an unrestricted free agent. When you trade for a guy who has one year left of RFA status, who has basically openly said, I'm only going to sign a one-year deal, like this year, whether it's with the Jets or if another team decides to offer him for a one-year, I don't know how that's going to happen. Can you really trade for him? Like, what if Jesse next year and Montreal trades for him and next year he just says, hey, some other team has given me a bigger bag. I want to go there. Well, that's just it, Josh. Like, I feel in Montreal, we sometimes have this approach. Like, for whatever reason, we've gotten into this approach. It hasn't been the story of the whole franchise, but like, oh, whatever star player we can get that can come. Oh, they want to come to Montreal because there's been a scarcity in the past. We feel like we just need to jump on them right away without – all the time thinking, hey, is this the best fit? Does this person really fit our mm -hmm. timeline of where we want to go? So I feel like we need to get out of this scarcity type approach. And another reason for that is we're doing a lot of things to attract players to Montreal, which we haven't done in the past. So I feel like we can still get those big free agents. I really feel, Josh, and I feel like a lot of our uh, a lot of our fans would agree that it's there's a lot of players in the NHL that would love to play for Martin St. Louis. And I also think there's a lot of players in the NHL that think that Kent Hughes is a really smart guy, probably because he's been their agent at some point yep. and helped him <laughs> get a really great contract and everything else, and would love to play, you know, for, for this man's organization. So I feel like we will be able to get those big fish out in the market, 
So I'm I'm not too too worried right now. Yeah, I understand getting this top end talent, locking him down if it's a possibility. I totally understand. Dubois is a very good talent. However, there's a lot of potential risks, a lot of potential downsides to this trade. And for a team who has said they really want to take it slow and build a team that the Habs faithful are proud of and they can cheer for from the ground up. I don't know if I see this happening, but uh, yeah, we'll have to keep you guys updated. And the only other thing we wanted to talk about today, that was the big thing, but Jesse, I wanted to take a little bit of a moment and talk about a guy who has been showing out in the under-18 worlds right now, and that is Gabe Perrault, a Quebec boy, and uh, has some very good praise from certain people. Scott Wheeler says his coach says his hockey sense is at a crazy high level. His future coach, uh, Boston College, which is where he's committed to, calls it off the charts. His strength coach says he added 27 pounds of muscle in two years. Yeah, okay, I'll need a citation. His brother wow. calls him special. Meet Gabe Perot, hockey fans. Gabe Perot is nuts, guys. He broke Austin Matthews' record for highest single season scoring with the U.S. National Development Program. Came off a 45-point uh, 23 game season in the USHL and put up 15 points in the first four games in the group stage at the under 18 worlds right now jesse he has had some of the like one of the biggest meteoric rises in in draft stock i've seen ever and is now sitting at about you know anywhere between like 15 and 40 on different mock drafts what do you think about the habs maybe taking a stab at another quebec boy like gabe perot if a florida's pick uh lands there and he's available well, absolutely. Has the pedigree as well, you know, son of Yannick Perot as well, longtime NHLer. Um, and it seems to be like he would be a good fit. You know, we are obviously looking for offensive minded players, which he's highly skilled, highly talented, really good stick handling abilities. But he's this type of playmaker that also likes to shoot, kind of like the anti Jonathan Drouet. You know, <laughs> and these are players that I like just because that aggressive sort of mentality where it's like, okay, I have the ability to set up other people. But I'm also looking for the net when I can as well, which I feel is like you're keeping your goal, the goalies really on their toes, you know, at, um, you know, when you're playing the game in that type of way. So it seems to be a really intelligent, able to distribute the puck really well. So, um, you know, I really like this, uh, this sneaky pick. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. And we've seen he's played a bit with Will Smith, right? They're both part of the U.S. National Development Program. And those guys seem to have some chemistry. So if there's a world where Montreal ends up landing Will Smith, by the way, it looks like Will Smith uh, day by day. Looks like he might be going in the top four. Um, it seems like the top four is almost locked in to be Bedard, Fantilli, Leo Carlson, and Will Smith. I know Columbus has really had their eye on him. So very, very interesting. But if Montreal can end up snagging Smith and snagging Perot, I know you don't draft for chemistry. You draft who you think is the best player available. But Gabe Perot, remind you guys, this guy is only turning, he's not even 18 yet. He's eligible for this draft because he's turning 18 before it. But um, I mean, Jesse, I feel like this is one of those it, like, I feel like he might end up going higher than people think, but if, if that Florida pick even lands at like 16, 17, 18, I mean, is there really much of a downside for Montreal taking a Hail Mary with him after already having, or not even, maybe a borderline Hail Mary, but all, after already having probably a top five pick? Well, we see that the national development program has been to us, very good to us already with mm -hmm. Cole Caulfield and most likely will be with Lane Hudson. I mean, all the indicators are pointing to that as well. So, I mean, this is a great program producing great players. And I mean, it is nice to think of. And that's a great point about chemistry, Josh. It almost makes me think of how we drafted Uri Slavkovsky and Philip Mashar last year is two players that have chemistry, that have familiar, familiarity, excuse me, playing yeah. together um, in the past, you know? So I think that that is something that we might uh, look to do again in the future. Um, you know, so I definitely, definitely wouldn't rule that out. Yeah, I think it could be very cool. I mean, this draft, the draft lottery is not that far away, guys. I know we're talking so much about it, but it's coming up so fast. We're super excited to be covering it. And Gabe Perot is quickly becoming one of my favorite prospects. If you haven't even heard of him, which you probably haven't, go take a look. Look, at there's a beautiful article. I think it was on The Athletic or something similar talking about his meteoric rise through scouts. Uh, if you look at mock drafts, he's anywhere from like 15 to 41. So he's all over the place, but he's a very interesting prospect. And I think you guys might want to take a closer look. But that'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to help us hit 5,000. It feels like we've been this close for so long, and I know the offseason's a slow time for Habs news when the playoffs are going on. There's a Leafs game tonight, but if you guys could help us out, hit that 5,000 goal, we'd be really, really happy. <laughs> I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.